Hello and welcome to the MyMon app instructional video. I'm going to be walking you guys through how to use and operate the MyMon mixing app um, for our broadcast location. Um, whether you are brand new to the team or have been on the team and using this for a while, this is going to be super informative. Uh, so watch and learn. So here is the first page you're going to see when you open the MyMon app. Um, you have to select your mixer. This only one's going to come up, which is Access One. So you click on that. Then right down here, you see the Select Mix. Then you click Select Mix. Now this will bring you up to all of the different mixes available, whether you're on Vocal One, Vocal Two, Three, Bass, Guitar, etc. So I'm going to pick um, Vocal One. So you select Vocal One, go down here and click Done. Now. I'm on an iPad right now, so it's very large. You could use an iPad, you could use an Android, you could use your iPhone, however you choose. iPhone's good for on stage. Um, I like to have an iPad sometimes. So what you see is a, basically a, reflect, a reflection of the mixer. So you can go and you can adjust, say your vocal one. Here's vocal one, you can go and adjust yourself. And these arrows here, you can swipe through all the different available channels. So you have all the drums, kick, snare top, snare bottom, rack and floor, synth, uh, guitars, all that stuff. So that's all available to you. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the basic functions of this app and then I'll get into a little more of the specifics of how you're supposed to operate it and how to make a good in-ear mix. So right here on the top you have the fader button, which we're in the fader screen. You have a link button. I'm not gonna go too much detail on that. It's not super necessary. And you have the EQ button. So hit the EQ button and it brings up um, a four band EQ where if you want a little more low end, a little more bass, you could bring up the bass. If you want to cut out some mid range you don't like, you could bring that down. If you want a little more high end, a little more crispiness, you could bring that up. Just be careful with it, it is sensitive. And if you suck out too much right here, you'll get like, you'll lose some of your uh, low end definition. Now, if you turn this upright, this is, if you're gonna be holding your phone, it'll be an upright position. On the bottom, so you see it's the same EQ, but on the bottom you have this. This is your master volume. So this controls the entire volume of your whole mix, so all the way off, and you can set it up. Right there is usually a good place, but you could boost it a little more or lower it a little more. So that's good for you to get um, a nice clean volume the way that you like it. So let's go back to the fader view. Another important um, feature that you have here is if you go to this mixer button right here, you hold it down, and this allows you to clear or add channels. So if you like, if you go scroll over to the right here, you see we have a lot of extra channels that we don't need. So if you want, you could hit these little arrows here and everyone you deselect removes it. So then you would hit back over here and hit okay after you've deselected them and those channels will disappear. So it's nice if you want to clean up your screen, you don't want to have every channel available, you can just uh, hide all those channels, which is super handy. Uh, another super handy feature is up here in the right hand corner, you have pan. That pan button, you still have the same view, but the difference is the faders are now panning. Panning means moving it left or right in your ears. Now this is super helpful um, to help clean up your mix, especially if you're on vocals. So say you're on vocals, Right here you have vocal one, vocal two, vocal three. Um, what's important about this is if you're in the middle, say you're vocal two and you're standing in the middle of the stage, you can pan uh, the vocal three a little bit to your left and then vocal one a little bit to your right. So you'll be hearing them from where they're standing on the stage. You know, and keys are off to the left. So you go here to our synth channel and move them a little bit to the left. You can move all the drums a little bit to the right what this does is it allows you to have a little more of uh, control over where people are standing. So it sounds like the sound is coming from where they're standing. And it also helps clean up your mix. If everything's right in the middle, it's all coming into your ears at the same point. But if it's spread, spread around the stage a little bit, it helps you um, clean up some mix. Okay, so that's how this app functions. So you got the faders right here. Um, and hit the pan button again to come out of that screen. Hit the mixer button, sorry. So now we're back in our normal view. Now, what's really important to remember is, um, and this is all the stuff you will learn, the more you get used to it, the more comfortable you'll get mixing yourself. But what's really important is, so you need to be able to hear yourself, but you can't be blowing all the faders. So if things are quiet, 
and all your faders are starting to look like this, that's not good. Your mix is not gonna sound good. It's gonna get over compressed. It might start to distort. So that is not, um, that's not how it's supposed to look. So if you're on a pack, you could turn up the volume on your pack. And if you're wired in, you go back to the EQ page and you raise your master volume. Um, usually it should be like right around here for a good volume for yourself. Um, and with your vocal one, so you want you to be the loudest so you can hear yourself the best. Bring the other vocals in right a little bit below you so you can still hear them so you're locked into their harmonies. And what people, a lot of people do is they make it that they can only hear like vocals and the click. Um, that's not that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to hear the vocals, the click, and the cues. So right over here you have click and you have cues. That's really important. Cues is from the track telling you where to go. Click is the metronome. And then you go one more page over, you have the MD mic. That needs to be super loud so you can hear the MD. We also want to make you could make sure you could hear the preaching mics. So Pastor Mike when he's coming up. Um, the media, if you want to have a little bit of that, that's like if they're playing uh, like a video in the house, you could hear that. And everything you should be able to hear a little bit. So the drums right here. So let's say you want a little bit of kick and snare is really important to have. So you could hear the real backbeat of the drums. The rest of the drums don't have to be so loud. Overheads can be low. And for you want to hear a decent amount of bass. You want to hear a little bit of guitar. And you definitely want to hear some piano. So make sure you hear a full spectrum of the mix, not just yourself in the click. You wanna make sure you can hear a little bit of everything because it helps you perform well. It helps you be confident in the way that you're worshiping because you're hearing the whole mix together um, you're, and you're not getting distracted. So as long as you can hear yourself well and then you can hear everything else at a lower volume, then you'll be set to go. But always make sure you can hear that click, the MD in yourself well. Um, that mostly wraps up this mix. Uh, and any more questions or details, you can hit up me, you can hit up Tim Bushing, you can hit up Chris Wrigley, and they'll all be able to help you really get deeper into this. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, go crush it.